牛彻 who was recorded as Han Wu Di, which means Emperor Wu of Han Dynasty, was a crazy rich Asian. His father, Emperor Jing, and his grandfather, Emperor Wen, had accumulated huge wealth for him, so he wanted to make some great achievements, like a great emperor. The first thing he wanted to do was to select talents nationwide. However, his grandma, Empress Dowager Zhou, believed in Taoism, which advocated "bu shang xian," not honoring the talents. Empress Dowager Zhou's influence in the court was so great, she did not allow Liu Che to do the political reforms, but made him to marry her granddaughter Cheng Ajiao. Liu Che did so, although he did not love Cheng Ajiao. Liu Che's sister, Princess Pingyang, then often invited Liu Che to her mansion to enjoy a good life. Princess Pingyang prepared lots of beautiful girls for Liu Che to enjoy a good life, but Liu Che only favored one slave boy, Wei Qing. He brought Wei Qing to the imperial palace and gave him a palace construction job there. After Grand Empress Dowager Dou died, Liu Che could not wait to end the buying peace policy. He did not want to marry Han princes to Xiongnu and pay large amounts of dowry anymore. He sent four generals to attack the Xiongnu from four directions. Three of them were experienced military officials. Only Wei Qing got the general title because of his relationship with Liu Che. To everyone's surprise, two generals were defeated. One got lost. Only Wei Qing won. This was the first time Han Empire won the war against the Xiongnu. Liu Che was a lucky guy. Wei Qing turned out to be one of the four greatest generals in Chinese history, and Wei Qing's nephew Huo Qubing was another one. With the help of Wei Qing and Huo Qubing, Liu Che won the Han Xiongnu Wars. One part of Xiongnu escaped to Eurasian steppe and Europe. Another part of Xiongnu became the residence of Han Empire. Because Wei Qing always won the wars against Xiongnu, the Zhou Party were gradually kicked out of the imperial court and the Han Army. Liu Che gradually replaced the courtiers and the generals with his men. Not long after Liu Che became the emperor. He selected lots of talents nationwide. One famous Confucianism scholar named Dong Zhongshu was selected. His interpretation about Confucianism is like this: The emperor is the son of heaven. If the son of heaven is not a good ruler, the heaven will handle this problem. So the people of Han Empire don't need to bother about overthrowing the bad ruler. The heaven will punish his son and give the people a good son. Liu Che loved Dong Zhongshu's interpretation about Confucianism. He ordered the new Confucianism to be the only philosophy in Han Empire, and the knowledge of Confucianism became a standard to select talents. That is the so-called recruiting and promoting talented commoners in government positions. One talent was Zhang Tang. Zhang Tang was also a law expert. He did lots of cases for Liu Che. Once, Liu Che ordered Zhang Tang to investigate his wife, Empress Cheng Ajiao. Ajiao was abandoned by Liu Che after her grandma, Empress Dowager Dou, died. Liu Che wanted to make Wei Qing's sister Wei Zifu as the new empress. Zhang Tang's job was to find evidence to prove that Ajiao was not qualified to be the empress anymore. Zhang Tang was a genius. He soon found evidence to prove that A Jiao was committing adultery with a woman. Maybe he got the inspiration from Liu Che, who was having affairs with men. If that was true, then Liu Che and his empress would be the first LGBT cup in history. A Jiao was abandoned, and Wei Zifu became the new empress as Wei Qing wanted. During Liu Che's reign, he selected lots of legal talents to be his officials. These officials would use cruel and extreme ways in interrogation and investigation. 
They are often recorded in history as coolie, which means crew officials. Wang Kuli was Zhu Fuyan. He was born in a grassroots and poor family of Qi vassal state. He planned to send his daughter to the harem of the king of Qi, but was refused. Zhu Fuyan was quite angry because he hoped to change his social status but failed. So he wrote a letter to Liu Che and advised him to do something to the Qi state and other vassal states because the rich and the powerful vassal states were big threats to the central government. Liu Che was quite interested in his advice. Zhu Fuyan immediately became Liu Che's favorite courtier because Liu Che led Zhu Fuyan to do something for him. Liu Che had taken Zhu Fuyan's advice to re-implement the Bestowing Grace Edict, and he also ordered the Chancellor of the Vassal States should be appointed by the Imperial Court. Zhu Fuyan then became the Chancellor of Yan Vassal State. Not long after Zhu Fuyan settled in Yan State, a secret was revealed by him. The King of Yan State had incest with his daughter. The King of Yan State then committed suicide and his kingdom was taken by the Imperial Court. Liu Che was quite satisfied with Zhu Fuyan's work performance in Yan Vassal State. He then appointed Zhu Fuyan to be the Chancellor of Qi State. Zhu Fuyan used the cruel punishment to interrogate and torture the eunuchs and the maids of the King of Qi. Then he got the answer he wanted. The King of Qi had incest with his sister. The King of Qi committed suicide and his kingdom was again taken by the central government. The other kings were shocked. Liu Che then killed Zhu Fuyan to pacify and comfort the kings. The king of Huainan, Liu An, wanted to rebel. He worried that he might be slandered and punished. However, he could not find any other kings to cooperate because the Bestowing Grace Edict was implemented nationwide. According to the Bestowing Grace Edict, the king needed to divide his state to all his sons instead of owning to one son. Soon there were no more powerful and big vassal states which could compete with the central government. Liu An decided to rebel all by himself because he was so confident with his black technology. Liu An was a famous chemist and alchemist in Chinese history. One day he was making some biochemical weapons, but he accidentally invented tofu. If he was not a king, he should be very rich now. Although Liu An had so many secret weapons, he was easily defeated by Liu Che. Liu Che did not want to kill Liu An because of the yummy tofu and the knife in itself Liu An invented. So he just took some land from Liu An for punishment and set him free. However, Liu An did not trust Liu Che. His son Liu Qian employed lots of Kung Fu masters in his Huainan Kingdom. Huainan, which was nowadays Anhui province, is a place famous for yummy tofu, but back to Han Dynasty, it was a place famous for swordsmen. Liu Qian boasted, I'm the top swordsman in the world. However, he and his Kung Fu masters were group annihilated by the Emperor Liu Che. After so many efforts, the kings were no more threat to the emperor anymore. The imperial court was much stronger than the vassal state. Liu Che's next step was to exterminate the assassins. So he put all the Kung Fu masters into jail and announced that it was illegal for commoners to become a Kung Fu master. Only the imperial guards were allowed to cut off the financial supporters of the assassins and the other potential rebellion organizations. Liu Che forced the billionaires to relocate to a place called Maolin. These billionaires had to sell their original lands and properties to the central government at a very low price. After the rich land laws got bankrupted, the peasants and the tenants became even poorer, but the emperor's position became more and more secured. However, Liu Che felt he still had one potential threat, that was his eldest son, the crown prince Liu Ju. 
Unlike his father, Liu Ju was a kind-hearted prince. He did a lot like the harsh laws and the policies made by his father. Because the crown prince was a future emperor, some officials then invested on the crown prince. Therefore, two parties were formed. One was the Emperor's Party, which advocated in ruling people by Iron Fist. One was the Crown Prince Party. Their conflicts became more and more stronger. The Crown Prince Liu Ju was a nephew of Wei Qing. After the Chief General Wei Qing died, Liu Ju lost his greatest protector. One jester named Jiang Chong knew that the Emperor Liu Che wanted to exterminate the Crown Prince Party. Because Liu Che worried that the emperor would split from the imperial court to gain the favor of the emperor, Jiang Chong told Liu Che that the crown prince was cursing him, and he made some fake news and fake evidence about the witchcraft. At last, the whole family of the crown prince Liu Ju was killed. Only one baby was kept. Finally, Liu Che achieved the great unification. He saved the empire from splitting up, but the people of the empire became extremely poor. They had to pay high tax. They even could not afford to buy salt, because Emperor listened to his economy consultant Sun Hongyang's advice and made salt into state monopoly. The empire was exhausted because of wars. Liu Che realized it was time for peace and economy. In 89 BC. He wrote an edict to repent. That's the famous Lun Tai Zhao, Lun Tai Edict. Two years later, he died. A new era had come.